Today, make more of your game with the new Zelda Breath of the Wild mod. This is Checkpoint. Hello and welcome to Checkpoint, where this week we are joined by Ian, who is filling in for Graham, who is in an undisclosed location. What do you mean undisclosed? He's in Seattle at the Sheridan. Well, he was at an undisclosed location, hiding out from legions of Dark Souls fans after he casually mentioned that the game might benefit from an easier difficulty setting, but now... Hmm. All right, Graham, if you're watching this, either get good or run. This weekend, millions of virtual bunnies starve to death in Second Life because of DRM. To explain, you could buy virtual pets in Second Life, and one of the biggest companies that made these virtual pets was Ozimals. The catch about the bunnies was they, like real pets, needed to eat food to live. And by eat food, I really mean be fed microtransactions called food, and then check in with the server to confirm that the purchase went through. Last week, the guy running Ozimals posted his website that he'd been hit with a cease and desist and he couldn't afford to fight it. So he was just gonna shut the whole operation down. No more servers meant no more food, and no more food meant no more rabbits. And it would have been merely just sad and maybe wistful if the rabbits had just vanished after Osmol shut down, but they didn't. Instead, it chose the more harrowing route. Uh, the rabbits are programmed to sleep if they don't get food for 72 hours, so slowly but surely this weekend, every virtual rabbit in Second Life laid down and then went to sleep forever, never to wake up again. I wonder if there'll be a boom in Second Life rabbit mausoleums. Nintendo of Japan has announced that they will be bringing three versions of Splatoon 2 to retail. In addition to the traditional game in a clamshell case and the download code on a card, Nintendo has also announced what they are calling Splatoon 2 Game Card Free version. This new version is the same as the traditionally packaged version, but swaps the game card for a download code and is priced exactly the same as every other version at 6,458 yen. Nintendo says that this version is for players who don't want the physical card, but do want the game case. This opens up the door for other bundles to cater to people who maybe want that used game feeling and want just the card with no case, or a bundle with the case and the cartridge, but no actual software for people who have no intention of playing Splatoon, but are desperate to see how it tastes. Or even a Splatoon 2 Flex Edition, which is just a prepaid Visa card with a balance of 6,458 yen and a Splatoon 2 sticker on it. Two extremely creative modders with a lot of time on their hands have made what is essentially Gary's Mod, but for Breath of the Wild. For those unfamiliar, Gary's Mod was the explosively popular and fun mod for Half-Life 2 that let players spawn any in-game item they wanted on command. The Accio mod, as creators Chatters and Mr. Bean 35000 VR call it, only works on the Wii U version of the game, and you need a Wii U with the JGecko RAM editor installed on it. Oh, and you need a PC that's connected to the same network as your Wii U. And also two separate tools, um, one to look up what the in-game item you want to spawn is actually called in the code, and another to then write a script that spawns the object. And then you have to convert the scripts to hex code, so to get into JGecko, but then you can do that. So sure, it's not as convenient as Gary's Mod, but you can spawn yourself infinite dog friends, so it's totally worth it. In financial news now, the value of WoW tokens has reached an all-time high on reports that Destiny 2 is coming to Blizzard's newly renamed Blizzard Launcher. WoW tokens, which can be purchased for $20 in cash, can also be acquired by trading for gold inside World of Warcraft, and could be used for one month of WoW subscription. Back in February, Blizzard added the ability to exchange tokens for $15 in credit in the Blizzard launcher, making them more flexible for players looking to invest in other Blizzard properties such as Overwatch loot boxes and Hearthstone card packs. On news of Destiny 2 launching in the Blizzard launcher, WoW token value has shot up by 26% to 140,000 gold and continues to rise. With the WoW tokens market this bullish, there's no time like the present to invest. In fact, Paul, I'd like to be uh, paid exclusively in WoW tokens, if possible, now. Uh, yeah, we can make that happen. Excellent. Now I've got between now and September to figure out how to turn copies of Destiny 2 into things I can eat and sleep in. World of Tanks has stirred up a world of controversy after some members of its community are claiming that it's using copyright strikes to take down YouTube videos that portray the game in a negative light. This is a bit complicated, so everybody settle in. 
Last week, a member of the World of Tanks Community Contributor Program, which is an invite-only club that provides early access to new content in exchange for publicity, and a YouTuber by the name of Sir Fosh, uploaded a video heavily criticizing a new tank called the Chrysler K Grand, saying the $80 tank lacked realistic weak points and was overpowered, criticizing it for being pay-to-win, and calling Wargaming, the company that runs World of Tanks, greedy fucks, among other things. Anyhow, Wargaming was not pleased, and they asked Sir, Sir Fosh to take down the video. When he refused, Wargaming threatened a copyright strike, saying if, they didn't, if he didn't do this, he wouldn't be able to monetize any World of Tanks content in the future. This conversation, of course, went public, and now Wargaming has gotten a lot of backlash. For their part, Wargaming are claiming that the video defamed the company, and that Sir Fosh's tone and language went over the line and included hate speech and homophobic slurs. And I can't check if that's true, because the video's been taken down, because Sir Fosh would rather do that than risk cutting off a major source of his income. On one hand, you can see why Wargaming wouldn't want a video with homophobic slurs in it that uses footage of their game. On the other hand, threatening precision targeted copyright strikes to shut down negative feedback is shady as fuck. It almost makes me appreciate Nintendo's approach, which is, which is to shut down everything regardless of whether it's positive or negative. Like, that's still ultra shitty, but at least you can't accuse Nintendo of being biased. And that was it! Great job, Ian! How's it feel to be behind the desk? Good. Informative. Authoritative. Powerful. Really? Oh, I feel is the cold embrace of death. Is that normal? After hosting Checkpoint, yes. So can we count on you to be a regular backup from now on? Oh, look at the time. I should be going. Coming up, Windcraft is a full MMORPG with NPCs, guilds, and quests built entirely in Minecraft. And it's perfect for anyone who has always wanted to play WoW or EverQuest, but has a pathological fear of circles. This weekend, millions of virtual bunnies in... in... Uh, sorry. <laughs>